how's, yes. How's the transition going? Good, good. A lot of seventeen-hour days, but you know, done this before a couple times. In that first two months, is uh, you know you're scrambling, but um, had no team. So when I got the five players, I was happy. I knew we could field a team. No one gets hurt or fouls. So I said, what about the schedule? They had no schedule. So now I had to do a schedule and build a team as I did the staff, but it's been good. Kelly, been good. Is, is your experience recruiting elite athletes helped you out in this, this new world we're, we're working in now with NIL? And I think if you historically follow me, I, recruiting, I've been fine. And whether it's transfers, whether it's freshmen, I mean, you know, recruiting is recruiting. You're, you know, do you add value to a young man and his family? Can you help him get where he's trying to go? Do you make it about him? Do you have a history? Can they do their homework and know, have you prepared young people like him? Um, or is it solely NIL? Well, then you don't come with us. You walk in, well, I got it. Well, why would you come here? This is a, the culture of achievement and seeing the best version of yourself and working harder than you've ever worked, having people say, I knew he was good. I didn't know he was that good. All that stuff um, plays a part in this and kind of separates what you're doing. But it was hard because I had no players. Now, I want you to understand what I said. <laughs> there was no team. And uh, we're at eight right now. We're at eight. I'm ecstatic. We're gonna. I'm looking for one more guy, and that's what we're gonna have. Now, I want to tell you, like they talk about walk-ons, it's a different era. A walk-on for me will be on full scholarship. Have the Pell if he's eligible, the student money, the camp money, like the old days of full scholarship. So he's fine, he's just not going to be, he's got to work his way into the NIL. And uh, still means I'm going to play the best people, but we have not really started on those other two or three positions. Yeah, it's a, been a, yes, breath of fresh air you could say. You know, it just, uh, um, 15 great years. I mean, we got a lot done. Um, I think the last year's team and what we were able to do and playing so many young guys, but the lesson was you can't do this now with seven freshmen. You just can't. You're going to hit a team that's 25 years old on average, six, one was 26, and that team's physically going to get you. And it's just so now we have a couple transfers that are older, some kids that transferred from Kentucky that went through it in a year older and some freshmen. What so, you, what do you think the Mark, Mark Pope hire? Can do? Thought it was a terrific hire. Mark and I have spent time, and you know he's a good man. He and I talked on the Friday morning um, when I was at the Final Four, and he couldn't have been more. You know, he's a former player, proud of what Kentucky was doing, and uh, didn't know he would be the coach at that point. But I think it's a terrific hire, former player. Um, there are things they've got to do that they know they got to do now. There are no options. There's you either do them or you know. So, and they're doing them from what I understand. Kel, you you've obviously had a lot of rivals when you're at the top. A lot of teams want to knock you off. Where, where's your rivalry with Bruce Pearl? You guys go way back with then, who? With with Coach Pearl, Bruce Pearl. You guys go way back. Where did you say that rivalry's at? Um. I, I don't look at coaches as rivals, it's more schools, um, and I've been doing this a long time, so you could say there are 20 rivals, but many of them are really close friends. You know, we played Mark Few last year. He was happy, but then he looked at me and he was sick. They beat us in Rupp Arena for What did you think of Nate Oates' run there, the Final Four? Terrific, terrific, and you know, we got him at home pretty good. And you would think, okay, but he got them together, you know. And um, again, older, 
you know, and, and did what he had to do. And Rick Barnes had a great run. There were a bunch of teams had good runs, and some of us lost early. Yeah, what spot you're trying to add right now? What, what position are you looking at right now? To add one the one ninth. It depends on who it is. Yeah. That's what we'll look for. Is it a shooter? Is it a four man that can shoot? Is it strong, physical? Um, is it a, a, a defensive guy? We're just right now. I can breathe because we got eight. And I'm hoping there'll be nine, but what if there's not? Somebody said, well, what if you have injuries? If the wrong guy gets injured on any team in this country, you're done. I don't care if you have eight guys, nine guys, 15, 16 guys. The wrong guy gets injured. And so my thing is, if a couple guys get injured, I'll have six really happy players because they'll play all the minutes. Is this like UMass in some ways? I did. At UMass, we played six. Calvin, that, that went pretty well for you, right? It did turn out well, and for those players. Calvin, how do you rejuvenate given all of the changes that you have to also deal with in the landscape of college basketball? I've always said, what's next and how can we be first? So you kind of read the tea leaves and how they're going to do things and how how do you do things and try to make it uh, where it works for everybody? I've always been around about players, and so um, you know I want them to do well, but you also want to make sure you're doing right by them in how you're dealing with this. Um, making sure you're you have people talking to them about taxes, so and it's not Texas, it's taxes, <laughs> and you know I tell them you know. You're, you're going to look at some of this and can't believe half your money better go in a tax account. You know, you've got to teach them about compounding interest. So, okay, you're giving them money, but what are you doing to protect them and teach them the things they need? So, but we're doing it and, you know, hopefully within the next couple of years, they come up with a better plan because this is all falling on coaches, both in football and basketball. It has fallen straight on coaches to do it. That's it. Now, and, and if you had an AD that supported it and helped you, okay. But those aren't a whole lot of them. They're just not. So now it's on the ADs and the, on the presidents. And it's off All right, here's what you can do. And now it, it's, it's, and I love it because it's not me having to make Cal, you've decisions. Been, you've been the heavy favorite for so long. Is there a party that relishes uh, as much We're as... We're not a, the heavy favorite now. <laughs> I was going to say, is, is, for now, as much as Arkansas can be an underdog in basketball, is there a party that relishes this challenge in this role? You know, it's... Um, I've been to different places, and they've all... Um, better watch you may hit you. <laughs> um, but I'm, I, I'm not, my guess is whichever building we go into, it'll be similar. They'll be trying to, and, and my guess is our building, Bud Walton, will be packed. Oh, yeah. um, right now we're doing some of the games that I've scheduled will be, you know, you get calls from ESPN, different events, CBS, can you do this and this. Um, until I get the rest of the roster, I probably won't fully do the schedule, but we're in good shape right now. So, um, I'm, 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 I'm juiced about it. Like, let's go. You know, I've got a great staff, uh, guys are working at this, and able to hire my son. So I get to work with my son every day. I'm seeing him, loving on him. So You got to talk to Sam very much, Sam Pittman. What's that? You got to talk to Sam very much. Great guy. Love him. Love him. We had more fun at dinner last night. He laughed. So the stuff went on. So, But Sam's a good guy. Got a really tough schedule. I said, they didn't do you any favors. The schedule he has is ridiculous. Which teams are, are you talking to you right now about potentially playing for my opponents? Um, most of the stuff is done of who we're playing. And then there may be one team that I try to do a home and home with. But we're going to play in Little Rock. Uh, want to play in Dallas. You know, want to have the kind of game. You, you need national games. you got to play in Madison Square Garden. There's things. I'm, look, we want to recruit Arkansas, Texas, Oklahoma, Missouri, St. Louis. We do. But you know we're going to recruit nationally. And the only thing is we're not going to take – six, seven freshmen. Now it'll be three or four. Hopefully retain a few, get a couple transfers, and that 
is the formula. You ready? Today. <laughs> Today. Now, that may not work, and then you'll say, well, you said, well, I, I changed my mind. I didn't like how it looked. How much better does the conference get once you come from Texas? What was that? How much better or different does the conference get once you add Texas? Well, Texas and Oklahoma both. Yes. You know, both in football and basketball. You know, what, what they add. It just made this league it's just keep separating us. And we didn't have to change the footprint. When you start going east-west and time zones and all that, we've been able to do this and stay within the footprint of what we're doing. Just getting, my guess, you know, they won't change that. If anybody, I'm not saying anybody's being added, but they'll be either in the footprint or they wouldn't be added to this league. So, so John, now you've been there a month. Like, how confident are you that you can win at the highest level at Arkansas? Bill, if you watch my history and me coach, you kind of, hopefully you would feel that he'll be fine. <laughs> I mean, you feel like the resources are all there and you feel yep. like everything's there yep. as, as promised? Yep. Thanks, guys. we got to go. All right. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.